doing is we're going to be combining some photo reference material that you can see here along with a sketch that I had done of the approximate same area. Uh, this sketch was done quite a while ago on location and I'm going to be combining that with the photo reference with this little marker idea that I come up with with this stream. Look at that white square that I have at the bottom. Now that is as pure white as I could get in Photoshop. And look how much darker and grayer the snow is in that photograph. Now we can't always go strictly by photos, but even in this uh, sketch here that I did, you know, we don't have pure white in here. We do have some color. So that's one of the big things I want you to be aware of when we're doing this snow scene. Okay, these are the colors that we're gonna be using for this painting. We're gonna use a very limited palette. We're gonna do this painting with titanium white, yellow ochre, uh, burnt sienna, or transparent red oxide, alizarin crimson, or alizarin permanent, and ultramarine blue. All right, so to get started in this painting, we're gonna to wanna to tone it down first. I had mentioned earlier how snow is not white. Its local color is white, but you don't want to paint it white. I'm thinning this color quite a bit with mineral spirits. You can see it's a very subtle tone. I want to neutralize that a bit more. So I'm grabbing a little bit more ultramarine. And you don't have to obsess over what this color is. You just need basically a nice violet tone. I'm going to take a paper towel and wipe off the excess. It serves two purposes. It gets rid of the excess paint that I don't need. And it also kind of rubs the color in. I want the canvas to kind of stain with this color. All right, so my stream, at least for now, I'm gonna have it start here. And I'm looking both at my photo as well as my little sketch down here. And you can see right now I'm keeping it pretty thin. And remember, we want variety of shape in here. Now see this, the color I just mixed now, it's a little bit more red than what I had here. No big deal. The value is still spot on. And that's ultimately what's important. And I'm just going to use this gray color to start to form some of the snowbank. The form of the snowbank, the snow is coming down like this and then it kind of abruptly drops down into, uh, into the water. When you're mixing these grays, the constant thing you want to have running in your head is First of all, is it the correct value? Am I getting the correct value? That is number one. But then number two is, you know, is this, what color is it leaning toward? Is it leaning more toward the yellow? Is it leaning more toward the red or more toward the blue? And is that what I want to have happen or not? I'm gonna grab some titanium white. Notice I cleaned off my palette. Now this is probably going to be one of the trickiest parts of this painting is getting the snow color. And once again I'm just using those three colors. White, alizarin, and yellow ochre. 
Right now, it's just slightly leaning toward more of a magenta color, which it shouldn't be. It should lean a little greener. So I'm going to add a bit more ultramarine blue and yellow ochre. That was a bit too much, so let's go back in with just a touch of alizarin. I probably didn't mix enough of this. Now, when you mix this, you might think, oh my goodness, you know, I'm mixing a gray. That, that doesn't look right. Snow isn't that gray. Well, yeah, actually, it can be very gray, especially um, with, the, um, with the sky being overcast. I'm going to put some of that on there. And as you can see, the value is pretty much the same as that wash that we put on. However, this is just a slightly more toward the green side. But I think the color is pretty, pretty accurate. And this gray, I'm pushing just ever so slightly toward the warm side. I'm not sure if that's what I need. Let's put some up there and test it out. That's not too bad. So it's slightly toward the alizarin and the warm side. It's te color temperature, it's about the same as this. One of the whole things about, you know, I said, let's put this uh, snow on here, but let's keep it thin, is when you're adding these darks, having this layer of snow already on here gives you a nice um, method of being able to softly mix this dark this dark into here using a very light hand I'm going to add a bit of white to it. I think that's a bit too warm there, a bit too hot. And now I'm going to mix the trunks in. Once again, we're just after a very neutral. In fact, I think I'm going to go with some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue for the most part with just a touch of alizarin. At the end of the day, it's about what's going to get you a pleasing composition and painting. So you'll have areas where it gets a little crazy, you know, maybe like up in here, and you'll have areas that feel more organized. It's, it's a nice balance between organization and areas that just seem to get a bit out of control because that's how things are in nature and it can be very pleasing to look at. Okay, we're going to mix a bit of the... in certain areas in the snow there's a little bit of shadow that's going on. Now this is overcast light so we do not have any cast shadows but we do have... we do have very soft form shadows. Yeah, actually, I think I'm going to shift this back to alizarin a little bit. That's what happens when you're dealing with these very subtle grays. And this painting is all about gray. And I'm using my quote-unquote dark brush to just tone these edges down a bit.
Okay, so in the water, we have some snow reflecting. It's not reflecting a lot. It's a very subtle reflection, merely because the movement of the water is subduing the reflection, but it is still there. Now, in some of these areas, there's some really dark accents. So I'm going to take ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and just a touch of alizarin. Now, right around here where these mounds curve away, you can get a little bit darker in value, just to emphasize that curve. I want to make sure I don't get too light with this snow. I'm going to darken this somewhat. If you get too light with it, it ends up looking like a void. Okay, with these snow scenes, a lot of times what you have happen is on an overcast day, which what we're doing, which is what we're doing here, is that the snow it'll be lighter on the top of the mound, and as it goes down, it gets a little darker. And even though this is overcast, a lot of times what I will do, what I've seen out there when I look at my sketches and everything, is I might see a slightly warmer tone on the top, and then we get to a more darker magenta tone, or even slightly bluer tone as we go down. I'm very lightly dragging the brush across to imply some of these clumps of weeds that have clumps of snow on them. And I'm not trying to draw anything precise when I do this. I'm just letting the brush kind of put the paint on where it will. Going and reestablish the implied fence post here. You will notice that the snow that's in this area, it kind of fades out. You don't see it that much, and it doesn't look as bright as the snow here. So, because that's how it looks. That's how you want to paint it. You don't want to take this value and color of snow and stick it up in here, except for maybe in a couple different spots, because if you do, it's just going to look really off and it's going to jump out. This is a study in grays, all right? But even though it's gray, because we use this limited palette and we weren't using a manufactured gray, say like, um, you know, Payne's gray or something like that, we still end up with a lot of color in here, which is good. If you found this video helpful, you may be interested in watching the full-length version. 
You can watch this and all my other monthly painting demonstrations by clicking on the link below in the description. In these demonstrations, I share all of my color mixtures, techniques, materials, and theory that will help you no matter what level you are currently at. My teaching style is very clear and concise and based on years of teaching and painting experience. Members get immediate access to almost 100 hours of instruction, high resolution downloads of reference photos and paintings, and early notification of any openings from my live online painting classes. Click on the link below and sign up today and I'll see you in the studio.